Ever wondered how Yamaha transitioned from crafting musical instruments to engineering marine powerhouses? In 1960, they launched the P7 outboard motor, marking their bold entry into the marine industry. From that modest beginning, Yamaha's relentless innovation has propelled them to the forefront of marine propulsion. Let's kick things off by understanding how it all started. When people think Yamaha, they usually picture motorcycles tearing up the track or a polished piano in a concert hall. Yet one of Yamaha's most electrifying chapters began in the 1960s with a trio of outboard engines that few outside the hardcore boating scene recognize by name, the P7, the P3, and the PC3. Though they liked the towering horsepower of modern beasts, these early models announced to the world that Yamaha wasn't content just with making waves in the music and motorcycle industries. It planned to rule the waterways as well. The P7, introduced around 1960, delivered roughly 7 horsepower, modest by today's standards, but it was a breakthrough in Yamaha's quest to master small engine reliability. Soon after came the P3, which offered a slightly different balance of power and portability, earning respect for its nimble handling and decent torque on smaller craft. Yamaha's engineers took these lessons and pushed further with the PC3 which edged up the horsepower and demonstrated even smoother running. Between them, these pioneering outboards showcased Yamaha's knack for precision engineering. They started more reliably, idled with less smoke, and handled wear and tear better than many existing rivals. For weekend anglers and casual boaters, the P7, P3, and PC3 solidified Yamaha's reputation for building dependable, user-friendly engines. Though later models would overshadow them in raw power, these first offerings were the company's calling cards. They proved Yamaha could translate its meticulous approach from pianos and motorcycles into a marine setting, laying the groundwork for a full-scale invasion of the outboard market. Long before Yamaha Motor Company became a marine juggernaut, the brand was known as Nippon Gakki, an enterprise that built top-tier pianos, organs, and other musical instruments. In the mid-1950s, following the success of Yamaha's motorized bicycles, top executives began asking, what else can we do with these engineering skills? Enter Genichi Kawakama, Yamaha's visionary leader and president. Some say he was inspired during a seaside holiday, others say he simply recognized the potential in an emerging leisure market. Regardless of the exact spark, one thing became clear. If Yamaha could build robust two-stroke engines for motorcycles, why not try outboards? Kawakami's personal journey into boating is often recounted with a playful sense of awe. The story goes that he was a fan of water activities and took a hands-on interest in small craft. He once declared that Yamaha should aim to build an outboard motor as dependable as a piano is musical. His employees sometimes poked fun at the idea. After all, lugging around a piano is a far cry from launching a boat at your local dock. Still, the seriousness of Yamaha's top brass became evident when they began funneling resources into marine R&D. They studied competitor outboards, dismantled them, identified weaknesses, and put together a plan to produce something that could withstand rigorous use in Japan's coastal waters, which are known for occasional harsh conditions. The transition wasn't smooth. Musical instrument assembly lines and small motorcycle plants weren't immediately equipped to handle corrosion-resistant metals or specialized gear casings. Engineers had to adapt swiftly, grappling with everything from salt-waterproof paint to high-torque designs that could push fishing boats and pleasure craft alike. According to some old-timers within Yamaha, the atmosphere was a mix of excitement and trepidation. People believed in the vision, but knew they were stepping into a fiercely competitive arena occupied by American heavyweights like Mercury and Johnson. Still, Yamaha's leadership didn't flinch. They systematically tested prototypes in local waters, using real fishermen as beta testers. This not only provided invaluable data on reliability and performance, but also built a grassroots fan base. Locals saw that Yamaha was dedicated to refining every last detail, and word began to spread. By the time the P7 arrived, the brand's leap into boating no longer felt like a wild gamble. It felt like a natural evolution of Yamaha's growing reputation for mechanical artistry, a journey that would soon see the introduction of even more revolutionary outboards. 
If Genichi Kawakami's love of the sea was a spark for Yamaha's marine ambitions, then his deepening interest in boating culture was the fuel that turned it into a blazing fire. There's an oft-told story among Yamaha veterans that Kawakami once visited Lake Hamana, a popular spot for recreational boating in Japan. While there, he observed families enjoying themselves, zipping around with motors that seemed either finicky or underpowered. Allegedly, Kawakami took a closer look at the engines and asked a local boater for a test ride. When he tried the outboard himself, he found the technology disappointing. We can do better, he supposedly exclaimed upon disembarking. Whether it's folklore or fact, the tale encapsulates the essence of Yamaha's shift, a passionate leader who recognized unmet needs in the market. From that moment, so the story goes, Kawakami redoubled his support for marine R&D, setting an ambitious goal, build outboards that wouldn't just compete, they'd dominate. That notion of dominating, however, brought about its own set of challenges. Yamaha was still relatively inexperienced in marine technology, especially compared to established American powerhouses. The biggest worry wasn't horsepower or top speed, ironically, but corrosion. Japan's salty coastal environment is notorious for chewing through metal, and early prototypes showed alarming signs of rust and pitting. Engineers spent months refining aluminium alloys, perfecting paint coats, and designing water jackets that could stand up to repeated exposure. It was a crash course in marine engineering, but the team was determined to ensure that any engine bearing the Yamaha name would meet the brand's high standards of durability. Meanwhile, Kawakami's involvement wasn't just motivational. He reportedly insisted on field testing the engines himself. At times, this meant running prototypes relentlessly, day in and day out, to see what might fail. Yamaha's early marketing materials featured Kawakami grinning on a boat, a playful nod to the idea that if the president trusted these engines, why shouldn't you? Critics found it gimmicky, but supporters saw it as a testament to Yamaha's commitment to the cause, and the growing fanbase viewed it as a charming quirk of brand identity. As production ramped up, so did rumors that Yamaha might even push beyond small outboards to create more powerful models, suitable for speedboats or commercial vessels. The notion caused a stir among competitors, prompting some to question whether Yamaha was biting off more than it could chew. But as you'll see in upcoming sections, the brand's ambition would soon speak for itself through the engines that rolled off the line, some of which would become legends in their own right. And all of it, if the rumors are true, began with one man deciding that his day on the water could be a whole lot better. By the early 1960s, Yamaha was making strides in the marine industry, with the PC-3 following the P-7 as another example of its ambition. The PC-3 wasn't just another engine, it was Yamaha's bid to reach a broader audience, from weekend boaters to fishermen and sailors needing a reliable auxiliary motor. Though later overshadowed, it marked a key step in Yamaha's strategy, climbing the horsepower ladder and expanding beyond a single niche. That climb accelerated in the 1970s with the introduction of larger, more powerful engines that began challenging industry leaders. Two models stood out, the 55A and 85A. The 55A became known as the everyman's engine, striking a balance between power and ease of use for mid-sized boats. Meanwhile, the 85A packed a punch, offering the torque needed to plane heavier vessels while showcasing Yamaha's growing technical prowess. Both engines reinforced Yamaha's reputation for reliability, a crucial factor in winning over boaters. Stories circulated about these motors enduring harsh conditions, saltwater immersion, overheating, even collisions, yet still performing. Yamaha also set itself apart by listening to customers, collecting feedback from dealers, boat shows, and fishing communities to refine components like water pumps and exhaust systems. With rapid success came scrutiny. Some questioned how a company known for pianos and motorcycles had managed to rival marine industry giants so quickly. Rumors of industrial espionage swelled, though nothing substantial surfaced. More concrete criticisms involved supply chain issues. Some North American distributors struggled with inconsistent availability of engines and parts. Yamaha responded by scaling up production and improving logistics, proving its commitment to the long haul. By the late 1970s, Yamaha had earned respect as a serious contender. The 55A and 85A became icons, engines that owners proudly boasted about. No longer just a Japanese upstart, Yamaha was now helping shape the future of recreational boating. With demand surging, Yamaha faced the challenge of scaling production. New manufacturing plants, advanced testing facilities, and design labs emerged to refine engine performance and fuel efficiency. 
engineers experimented with improved combustion systems, lighter materials, and innovative propeller designs to keep Yamaha at the cutting edge. Racing became a crucial proving ground. Yamaha saw competition as the ultimate stress test. If an engine could survive high-speed, high-stakes racing, it would excel in everyday use. Victories in offshore powerboat events fueled the brand's reputation, making Yamaha synonymous with high performance. But competition was fierce. Established brands like Mercury, Johnson, and Evinrude fought back, launching new models and leveraging their own racing pedigrees. The result? A golden age of technological leapfrogging, where rival companies continuously pushed the envelope in durability, power-to-weight ratios, and efficiency. By the 1980s, Yamaha faced a new challenge, environmental concerns. Two-stroke outboards were criticized for polluting waterways, leading to stricter emissions regulations, especially in North America. Yamaha responded by developing cleaner burning engines with better fuel efficiency and reduced emissions. Over time, the company embraced four-stroke technology, balancing performance with environmental responsibility, though not without resistance from traditionalists who loved the high-revving nature of two-strokes. Through it all, Yamaha stuck to its core philosophy, continuous improvement. Whether refining engine design, incorporating customer feedback, or embracing emerging technology, the company's dedication to innovation never wavered. By the late 1980s, Yamaha had cemented itself as an industry leader. The only question left, how far would it push the boundaries of marine engineering in the years to come? By the mid to late 1980s, Yamaha had established itself as a formidable player worldwide, and the company's outboard lineup reflected its evolution. Models like the 55A and 85A had paved the way, but Yamaha wasn't stopping there. They introduced a range of mid to high horsepower engines that married cutting edge technology with user friendly operation. Improved oil injection systems became standard in many of these outboards, addressing long standing complaints about mixing fuel and oil by hand. Boaters relished the convenience while mechanics noted fewer seized engines, a win-win that boosted Yamaha's reputation even more. As the 1990s approached, Yamaha doubled down on four-stroke development, anticipating stricter emission laws in Europe and North America. Early four-stroke models, while heavier and generally costlier, showcased remarkable quietness and fuel efficiency. This shift was transformative. The brand once associated with high-revving two-strokes now became a leader in environmentally responsible marine engineering. The new generation of Yamaha outboards began sporting advanced electronic fuel injection and even variable camshaft timing in select models, bridging performance gaps that once made four-strokes seem sluggish. Suddenly, you could plane a decent-sized boat without polluting the marina with a cloud of blue smoke. Alongside these mechanical leaps, Yamaha undertook broad infrastructure improvements. They established extensive service networks, ensuring parts were more readily available. Dealership training programs popped up, so technicians worldwide could get certified specifically on Yamaha engines. This holistic approach appealed to the average boater, who valued reliability not just in the product itself, but also in the service experience. Reviews praised everything from Yamaha's streamlined cowl designs to the ergonomic control boxes that made skippering a breeze, even for novice captains. Interestingly, Yamaha's success also sparked new collaborations and alliances. Boat manufacturers began designing hulls explicitly for Yamaha power plants. Racing teams that once overlooked the brand now saw Yamaha as a legitimate partner for high-stakes competitions. And while controversies still surfaced, particularly around corporate strategies and patent squabbles, Yamaha's track record for innovation and customer satisfaction seemed to overshadow the negativity. In modern times, models like the F-Series outboards, the F-70, F-90, F-115 and beyond garnered a near-cult following among fishermen, water sports enthusiasts and commercial operators. Yamaha was no longer the scrappy newcomer, but a top-tier authority in marine power, pushing boundaries with each new release. And with whispers of hybrid electric designs and even hydrogen-fueled concepts on the horizon, it's clear that Yamaha isn't about to rest on its laurels. The future may hold fresh technology we can't yet fully imagine, but one thing's certain, Yamaha will be there, forging new paths and proving that sometimes the greatest leaps happen when you blend mechanical expertise with an unrelenting desire to explore and conquer the open water.
That's the story of how Yamaha rose to outboard engine fame, from the modest P7 to the industry-shifting four-strokes we see today. Jokes aside, it's a tale of bold leadership, sharp engineering, and more than a little drama along the way. Whether you're fishing at dawn or chasing adrenaline offshore, Yamaha engines helped shape what boating means for all of us. Hope you found this voyage as enlightening as it was entertaining. If you enjoyed this deep dive and want more stories like it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.